Plasma 1945 in an SU-27. Get you some basics here. We're going to figure out how the radar works in the SU-27. First things first, this mission is available in the download in the description of this video. And I'm going to hit Control shift on the right side. Hold those down and tap the letter H to bring up the brightness of my screen. Next, if you've got your trimmer bound, make sure you trim the airplane out. That would definitely help out. And you can see a slightly enlarged version of my multifunction display on the right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for potential hostiles that are in front of us. Right now I'm flying with my radar pointed forwards, but I don't have an AWACS with me. I've got some missiles and I've got four F-15s and I've got an A-10. Radar is on and you can scale to zoom in and out. By pressing plus and minus, I recommend binding it somewhere because it'll make a world of difference for you. Now, as you zoom in and out on your MFD, it'll also change on your HUD. They are linked together. So the HUD top scale is 10 right at the top here, which means 10 kilometers. Just the same thing on the MFD down in the right hand side. The from your plane to the top is 10 kilometers and each of those little squares is two kilometers. I changed the scale. Now the top is 25 and the scale is now five kilometers. Just like on a map, you're zooming out. Now it's 10, so that means the very top of your HUD is about 60 and same thing on the MFD. 100 and beyond. All right, radar is on and now I can start panning my radar up and down to look for targets. In scenarios where you are flying without AWACS, you're going to count on your RWR to figure out where the hostiles are. And as you can see in the bottom, very bottom right hand corner, I'm getting three dots in the direction of approximately one o'clock. And that's where I'm going to have some hostiles. And I've got a first pop up. It shows up on my HUD as a single line. If there's two lines, that is a friendly indicator. It's co altitude and I can lock it. And I'm being told that by the arrow that it's approximately 60 kilometers away, 50, 60 kilometers away. Co altitude, the altitude of the aircraft is shown above my altitude and so is their speed. Now, I can also slew my radar upwards and all of a sudden I'm getting another contact. The symbol of this contact is different. It has larger horizontal wings and a small nose, meaning that it is slow but very high. I lock it. He's at 11,000 meters and coming in at 790 kilometers an hour. Drop the lock. Let's keep looking around. And all I'm doing is I'm just slewing my radar up and down slightly as I'm looking around. There's that high flyer. But he's pretty slow. Not much of a threat. And additional contacts have populated. So there you go. Another guy has just dropped altitude and he's at 790 kilometers. He's called to do with me coming from this side. Again, slew the radar up or slew it down to look for a contact. If a contact disappears, you may have looked too high or too low. There you go. We've got a lock on one enemy coming in towards me. He's quick. Let's fire an ER point blank at him. 780 kilometers, a little slower than me. There goes the ER. Right away, switch over to a 73. Just in case we need to finish him off. He's evaded the ER. No, he hasn't. But an extra missile never hurts. Now, note that as soon as I've got them locked, all the other contacts are gone. That's the beauty of the Russian radars. Once you're tracking a target, you're not seeing anything else. So we've got one contact here. We've got additional contacts on our sides. And as you can see, I can slew my radar right and left. As soon as the hostile is on my radar, they will appear with a little number next to them and they will also appear on your HUD. 
and you just position you click to lock them in if your radar is not seeing the contacts if I pan my radar away the little number will disappear and the contact will disappear off my radar so this guy looks to be flanking me and I've just lost him if I level back out I can look for any potential RWR signals but looks like it's pretty quiet and the hostiles have decided to ignore me so that's how you look for hostiles with just your radar and as I come around I'm finding these F-15s there in front of me there's one not only do I see its label but I can see him on the radar as well if it's too sunny I'm gonna press right shift H to bring up my sun visor and there he is locked he's dropping flares and running let's leave him alone and let's keep our radar on and do another sweep in the other direction so I can lock the first one he's at an altitude of 2000 drop the lock bring the radar up by one here's our second guy altitude of 4000 and what's happening here is my beam is basically pointing at their tail profile but uh, they're at different altitudes always remember to recenter your radar so now we've got one guy here and let's bring it back down to zero and one guy here if I drop my altitude and point my radar up I might even be able to pick up both of them as my beam cuts through both of the aircraft it's all about triangles and numbers so flying at minus one let's see how low can I get and see if I can see both of them so I'm seeing just one for now and looking up there's one of them and there's a second and now I've got the oh just for a second I had both of them there Let's see if I can catch up to them and have them both in the same beam and what I need to do is as I get closer to them I may need to adjust my scan range higher or lower because they're getting more and more on top of me so there's the first one there's the second one and now I'm close enough that I've actually got both of them in one beam so I don't need to elevate my beam or lower it to see them individually I bring my beam back down to one they disappear two there's one of them but now because they're so close on top of me I need to go to three to get them both because I'm literally getting underneath them and my beam is pointing almost directly up so again as I get even closer I need to keep bringing my beam upwards if I'm going to turn the AWACS on all right so now that we've got our AWACS set up just like before we're going to go full afterburner going to turn on our radar and uh, go into BVR mode so the screens have been updated and as you can see at 50 scale we see a very different picture We've got one contact, medium altitude, and pretty slow. That's the A-10 on our 12 o'clock. And behind them, we've got two F-15s that are low. Those are the guys on the left side. And on the right side, we've got two more F-15s. One is high and very fast, and one is high and slow. And because they're rookies, they're going to slow down and become very manageable in a few seconds. But they are not showing up on the HUD. That means that we're seeing them purely as data link contacts. Because my radar is on, as I slew it up or down, the A-10 becomes locked, and there it is. I can now see him on the HUD, and a small number has appeared next to him on the Datalink MFD. Now what it's telling me is that I both have him as a Datalink contact, and also tracking him by my radar. So now I can lock him, and the back of his plane becomes solid color, which now means that I've got him in a lock. Unlike just having the radar, having data link also gives you awareness of the other aircraft. Even though I've got this target locked, I can still see the data link updates 
for the other four aircraft that are heading my way. I can even fire a missile. And as the missile flies towards the target as I'm holding lock with my Fox 1, I can still see the status of the other aircraft that are coming in towards me. Now, if you did not have AWACS, once you lock the target, you are going to lose the status of all the other aircraft that are coming in. So that's one of the limitations of the Russian radar. It's a very powerful radar, but once it's guiding a rocket to a target, you're going to lose track of targets, other targets that are not being locked until your missile hits or until you break lock. So missile hit, now I can break lock, turn the radar back on again, and now I'm seeing additional contacts. And again, as you can tell, the ones that have a solid triangle means that my radar is painting them and they start showing up on my HUD. The ones that have an open triangle at the back means that my radar is not seeing them, but data link does see them. And also aircraft can fall off of data link. So as you can see here, my AWACS is now turning. So what's happening is those contacts are being only shown by my radar. Their symbology has changed. So now I'm picking up all these contacts purely as a radar contact. If I lock one of them, all the other symbols disappear. I didn't do anything with the radar, but the AWACS now is in a turn or in a situation where your AWACS might get shot down. Now that the AWACS has finished the turn, the symbols reappear. And that's what you get for your AWACS making a turn. When it's making a turn, its dish may not be pointing at the hostiles. And again, there it is, it's happening again. The AWACS is still in his turn. And some contacts have the little triangles at the back, and some do not. So let's go radar back on. You know, we've got two hostiles on our left. Their symbols are fluctuating. AWACS is turning around, but we know where they are, so we can lock this guy up. We've got a confirmed lock, and we're waiting for him to enter the cone in front of our aircraft. That is our weapon employment zone. Once an aircraft is in that cone, you'll be able to launch your missiles. Similarly, with uh, other types of weapons, there will be a, a zone that will be displayed. Now, the zone will change depending on the vector of your aircraft that's flying towards you and what they're doing, but having them locked moves the arrow down, so he's entered the zone. Now it's moving towards the no escape zone. That's the second solid bar on the left side of the HUD. There you go, let's send a Fox 1 his way. And F15 down. Now, as you can see, the radar contact stays there for a few seconds as the aircraft is coming out of the sky. So it's very often that you'll think, hey, did I shoot this guy down? Why is there an aircraft still there? Well, it could be that they're uh, still falling out of the sky and the AWACS can still see them. So again, we come back around and we're looking at these aircraft. Now they're flying bearing 090 towards the sun. And just the same, what I can do now is I can turn off my radar and go into electro-optical mode. So this is radar on, and this is electro-optical mode. Now the electro-optical mode has a shorter range than the radar, but you are able to detect targets with it. So for example, here we've got a target and I locked them. And as you can see, the data link symbology has now changed. Even though my radar is not on, my electro-optical system has correlated with the data link contact and has now locked the hostile that's flying there. And the data link contact has now looks to be locked. But it's locked purely in EO mode, so he has no idea that I'm actually tracking him. Now let's look for his friend. So here is his friend. Somewhere in front of me here. There he is, there's his little symbol. Get him locked. And again, now this F-15 is locked. 
but if he was a pilot, he would have no idea that he's actually being locked. Because my radar's not on. So I turn on the radar. Now I've got both radar and EO. Turn it off. And EO only. Drop the lock. Vertical scan. Vertical EO. And now this guy is locked through vertical electro-optical system. And because the AWACS is doing his turn and these guys are in a 90 degree beam to the AWACS. And I'm out of fuel. Well, that's why it's not being seen. So let's bail out. You guys give this uh, a try. Try to find targets with both the AWACS off and without the AWACS on. And try locking them with both EO and radar. Scan up, down, right, left. And uh, drop your comments below.